you. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Natalia Yaklova, and my, I would like to introduce my presentation about an alkylation of lysergic acid derivative under phase transfer conditions in continuous arrangement using sonic action. So, uh, first short introduction. Uh, my focus of my work is transfer batch process and alkylation in uh, two companies. So this alkylation is part of pharmaceutical synthesis uh, of metagoin. The structure is here. And from continualization, we can improve of industrial batch process and maybe uh, replace toxic alkylation agent. Uh, this an alkylation process under phase transfer catalysis uh, condition and is uh, transformed into an similar phases. So my hypothesis uh, was if I use sonication, uh, the sonication intensify recovery of interfacial interface and increase, I, I can increase total flow rate and increase the production. Uh, here is the reaction scheme. I started with the uh, 10 alpha methoxy dihydrolysergic acid metal ester. Sorry, I call it Luma because it's shorter. And alkylation agents is dimethyl sulfate and uh, phase transfer catalyst is tetraethyl ammonium hydroxide. As I say, the reaction proceeds into emissible phases. One if so, one uh, water phase is sodium hydroxide and organic phase is um, dichlormethane. And product is uh, one methyl and alpha uh, methoxydehydrolysergic acid methyl as their short name Maluma. So uh, here is a supposed mechanism of the reaction um, based on uh, experimental observation and literature. The reaction started uh, on phase boundary uh, where Luma is deprotonated via sodium hydroxide. Then uh, uh, deprotonated Luma exchange uh, cation with tetraethyl ammonium hydroxide and new ion pair is transferred to the organic phase. Then uh, Luma anion react with dimethyl sulfate and form our product. So uh, why, we, um, why we study this reaction and why we try conti uh, in continuous arrangement? Uh, because this reaction is exothermic uh, and uh, in batch process, the reactant must be um, uh, cooled before the reaction and the reaction is fast. Uh, in batch process, the reaction time is around 75 seconds. And the main requirements for this reaction is high conversion uh, because the lumen cannot be separated from final mixture and high selectivity, but the reaction from the side products formation, specifically at quaternary ammonium salt. Uh, so we use continuous arrangement and this continuous mode allows more efficient reaction control and safer process because we use small volume. Our first uh, apparatus was, was with, in, with microchip reactor. Uh, you can see here on, on this picture and here is our apparatus. And this apparatus, uh, we try verify feasibility uh, the reaction in continuous arrangement. And this is the best result in this, in this microchip reactor. So conversion was only 93% and selectivity 93%. The production is only 0.2 gram per hour, but the reaction can be um, uh, performed in continuous arrangement. So we try scale up, and this is our new apparatus. Uh, we frack the Ronza here, and uh, the production increased to 11.5. The reaction volume is uh, 2 milliliters, and conversion was total, it was very good, and selectivity 95%. Um, after that, um, I can increase the production. So I, I try sonicate the output capillary from Lonza reactor because the output capillary is main reaction area. And I measure um, four different flow rates in this new um, arrangement. Uh, flow rate 5.2 to flow rate 
8.4 milliliters per minute. Uh, uh, you can see for flow rate 7.2 milliliters per minute, if I use sonication, is same selectivity as for flow rate for milliliters per minute if we, we didn't use sonication. It was from the previous slide here. Yeah. And the production increased from 11.5 to 22.8 gram per hour. Mm -hmm. So if the sonication can use on only on amplifier, I can sonicate the entire apparatus. So I built this small um, uh, this small apparatus, this small reactor from modular micro reactor system. And the main part is three different static micro mixers. I place in the intrasonic block. Here is the whole apparatus. But in this, um, uh, 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 but if, when we measure some experiments, there uh, was problem with plugging. So at, uh, at the first, we must optimize the reaction cooling. And here is the here are the results for MMS. Uh, if we compare uh, uh, experiments without sonication and with sonication, there is no difference. So the sonication had no effect, no positive effect. And if we if we compare an M reactor, MMS reactor with Lonza reactor, the Lonza reactor was better. So I got a different approach. I know from long reactor that, that the sonication of output capillary was this fluoropolymer was, was very positive. So I, I built my new reactor only from fluoropolymer capillary. And I placed it in the contraction in bed. And I used stainless steel capillary for cooling, but in temperature about 20, 25 degrees. And for the first time, I used a uh, continuous separator. This continuous separator works uh, that the reaction mixture uh, came on top, uh, then immediately separate the organic phase and aquatic phase uh, and water phase. And uh, organic phase came out uh, this side um, outlet, and the level of uh, water phase can regulate with this way. Um, here, here is the results for capillary reactor. If we compare uh, experiments with soni without sonication and sonication, we can increase uh, conversion from 76% to 99 and mellow mass selectivity uh, from 83% to 95%. If we compare the reactor and capillary reactor, they are the same results, but uh, for uh, the capillary reactor is better because if we uh, if I compare um, different series of, of measurement in the capillary reactor, the <clears throat> the experiment data are more stable, and significant side product in capillary reactor are um, where quaternary salts from lumen and melumen. And in conclusions, <laughs> I transform the batch process into continuum. Process. I use different types of reactor for three, three, uh, three different different types of reactor. I apply a sonication uh, because of that. I can increase production by preserving selectivity. I started with production 0.2 gram per hour, and now my production is about uh, around 22.8 gram per hour. Thank you for your attention and. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. Um, uh, so you have several types of reactors, and in some of them, the sonic application has an effect on the reaction, and some of them not. What is the for it? Uh, I think it's because uh, uh, this uh, this type of reactor is um, stainless steel, and the ultrasonic uh, bath is not. Uh, not, not quite strong for uh, the, sun, uh, the ultrasound can go into this module. Okay. Yes, but the, it's only uh, only capillary, floral, only plastic. So 
the 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 results is the, the ultrasound is strong for the for the mixing this this um, this therapy. And with the microchip. What? And with the microchip layer. Uh, I, I, I didn't use sonic, oh. sonication in microchip reactor. It's from um, uh, glass. Um, well, may I have one more question? Um, no, I, I have some additional questions. Yeah. Did you try the, the effect of the magnitude or level of sonification? Or just do it for one? one? For, for one. Mm -hmm. And then the second question would be, uh, you reported some influence of certification on certainty. So what mechanism would be there? Um, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will make here. Uh, so it's uh, because uh, the phase boundary, uh, if we use sonication, the, uh, uh, the drop in, in the drop of uh, sodium hydroxide is smaller and the interface is bigger and can change. And uh, the uh, our reaction um, go well because from from Uma they can um, uh, form some other products like um, this quaternion salt from Lumel. And if we have, uh, if we don't have a good um, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> ratio, yes, yeah, ratio. If you don't have good ratio, um, Lumel and, and, and um, sodium hydroxide, this, uh, this side product increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so um, the sonic effect, the son, sonication um, is very good, and, and this side reaction is low degree. I, I, I mean, it's pretty good. I don't know. Yeah? Okay. 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 We have still time for one question. Yes, I have a question, please. Okay. Yes, uh, excuse me. Uh, so uh, just I want to ask you uh, if you control the temperature during um, your uh, step of sonification. sonication. So, sorry, one more time, please. Temperature. I ask, uh, yes, uh, for concerning the temperature. Um, did, did you control the temperature during uh, yes. your your sonication. Yes. Uh, in capillary reactor, we have the stainless steel capillary in yeah. ultrasonic bath, and we control the temp bath temperature between 20 and 25 degrees. Okay. Previous and experiment, I know the 20 uh, and 25 degrees uh, have same selectivity. It's not a difference between. Okay. Them. Okay. Thanks. So thank you once more for the presentation. For the second presentation, we will still in the online microphone. And this time presentation will be done. So I will be dealing with the uh, separation of nanoparticles in microcoding device. We can share. Oh, thank you. He was good. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anna Pashikova, and I am here to introduce you to my research about separation of exosomes from for dispersal suspension in microfluidic devices. My supervisor is Mr. Havlica, and supervising expert is Mr. Stoffi from the University of Union Evangelista Putin. Uh, at first, I will introduce what exosomes are. 
There are extracellular vesicles. Uh, they are secreted by most mammalian cells, and they range in size from 30 to 200 nanometers. As you can see in the picture, they are formed for, from the membrane, and they can be loaded with RNA, DNA, or larger proteins. Mm. So there is hope that we can use it in drug delivery or tissue regeneration. Also, they can have uh, specific receptors on the on their surface. So there is possibility that we can use them as biomarkers for disease diagnosis. However, they are also always uh, present in a polydispersal suspension with various cells or debris. So for further use, we need to separate them. A conventional method that is mostly used is ultracentrifugation, which has unfortunately very, very low yield and it is a multi step process, so it takes a long time. Other disadvantage is that exosomes are susceptible to mechanical damage, so there is effort to find a non destructive separation method. A good way seems to be inertial microfluidics, and we focused on a method with addition of elastic lift forms through non Newtonian fluid, which is done by the addition of polymer polyethylene oxide. Now, uh, here you can see our microfluidic device. The important thing is that we have two separate inlets one with sample, with particles, and with addition of polymer. And the other one is only uh, fluid with polymer without the particles. To arrange the particles to stay uh, along the wall at first, it is important that the sheet inlet is flow velocity is much larger than the sample. So at first we have particles along the wall and during the channel they are separated by size by the effect of some forces. Our microchip is fabricated by spin coating silicon vapor. Then laser lithography is applied and the negative photopolymer uh, is hardened and our master is formed. On the master, we cast PDMS, which is another polymer. And after it is hardened, we use reactive plasma bonding. And our microchannel is attached to a piece of glass. And the last step is attaching connectors via UV glue. Uh, to observe particle transport in experiments, we use uh, inverted fluorescent microscope. In the picture, we see the two, we can say two streams, sheet inlet, sheet fluid, and sample. So the light part is the particles. And if the particles are small, they stay along the wall. And if they are large, they are centered in the channel. Uh, we also perform computational simulation, which is done by open form. To be specific, there is solar simple form, and then our in-house code. We do it by one-way approach, which can be used since particles do not affect the fluid motion. Exosomes are very light, very small, and also they have similar density as the fluid, so they do not affect the fluid motion. And in the second step, we, we track particle motion, which is done in Aldroid B model, and we use our in-house code for tracking the particles. Numerical model is governed by these equation, equations. We have continuity and navier stokes equation, which assume uh, isotherm and incompressible fluid. Uh, for particles, we applied Newton's second law. On the right side of the equation, you see all the forces we consider. So we have inertial length, elastic length, back force, buoyant force, and vector mass force. Uh, buoyant force does not have uh, much effect because, as I said, the uh, density 
and mass is very low and similar to the density of wood. Then we have deck force, uh, which is the force of resistance. And according to the value of particle Reynolds number, we use different numerical models. In our case, we use mostly Alexander. Uh, inertial lift force is acting in the direction from channel wall to its center. And virtual mass force has significance in the case that the difference of velocities is larger. Uh, then we have elastic lift force, which is applied for non newtonian media. And it is the most significant force in our case. And we can say that the uh, efficiency of our separation is measured or uh, measured by competition of elastic lift force and drag force. For the Audroid B model, we have this governing equation: stress tensor, rate of deformation tensor, and viscoelastic part of the stress tensor. Finally, we get to my results. So we have PDMS microchannel. Uh, in cross section, it is 50 micrometers wide and 25 micrometers high. And this is only a part of the uh, crossing where we have sheets fluid and polydispar sample. And as you can see from the low velocity field, uh, the sheet fluid has much larger velocity as I already said. Uh, behind the cross section, uh, the crossing, we have a uh, straight channel that is long three centimeters. Uh, our experiments are mostly in correspondence with the numerical model. Here is another example of that. Here we have concentration. Sample has concentration one and sheet fluid is zero. And as you can see, they are not mixing at the crossing, which is also visible from the experiment. We have done parametric study. Uh, we study the effect of channel geometry, flow velocity, and sheet sample ratio. So here are the values that have the best results. And we also study the effect of PEO, PEO concentration. Uh, to explain the graphs, we have uh, y-axis that corresponds to the width of the channel we can say. Here is the channel wall, and here is the center, so you can see that the particles, depend independence of their stars, are moving either along the wall, so these are exosomes, and large particles are going to the center. Uh, you can see that the concentration are very low, but they have quite effect on the trajectories. So to sum up my work, uh, fine tuning of experimental methodology was done. Uh, we developed an in-house code for part of and we can see that PEO concentration significantly affects our particle trajectories. Uh, from our results, we can say that this method would be suitable as an alternative to conventional separation methods. And my future plans are fitting elastic coefficients from experiments to numerical model. Then we would focus on opti optimizing the microchip design. Uh, we would like to try the effect of high aspect ratio geometry and to fabricate the device from other materials. And we would like to move on from straight channel to a wavy structure. So we would add the vortices into the system. Uh, in the end, I would like to thank for support from the internal grant agency of Jan Evangelistic Pukinje, and of course, to my supervisor and supervising expert. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for the presentation and please comments, questions. I guess that you're operating in laminar conditions. Yeah.
And uh, is, is there a risk that the nanoparticle may break those conditions? Uh, or are, they, are you considering as part of your uh, FD model? Yes, they are only laminar uh -huh. flow. Uh -huh. And the Reynolds number are very low, so I wouldn't say that it could be a turbulence. Okay, and the no. particles are part of the model there, or or are you consider are you considering the nanoparticles uh, massless in the model? Uh, not massless, but since they have very uh, density, very similar to the water, mm -hmm. they do not affect the fluid. Thank you. Um, so uh, I'm sorry if I missed it on the beginning, but uh, so uh, how do you prepare your your particles? Well, where where you get it actually? The mixture of the uh, If you would like to use exosomes, you would have to separate them from biological fluids, as is blood or mm -hmm. I don't know. And uh, so far, it's not part of our experiments. Uh, our colleagues from biotechnological department can do it. But so far, we only used uh, prepared particles that are only uh, simulating exosomes in their size and other properties. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of particles? Uh, I think they are polystyrene. I'm not sure from what they use. Thank you. I have a question about this for force balance. Can you put your display? Sure. Which force is causing the particle moving or drifting or migrating to the wall? Uh, well, the most significant is elastic lift force, which is causing them to migrate uh, to the channel if they are. Uh, larger inside. So if they are small, they are staying along the wall. Okay. And the next one, yeah. So here you have uh, Reynolds divided by 24. What was the origin of this? Uh, this is uh, for equation from literature. And if we would like to use uh okay, dealing with the drug force and this rain of the line 24, it's the form for each. Okay. Uh this okay. equation is for general uh general case. In case we would have uh Stokes regime, we put uh okay, Stokes regime for very good part. Yes. Okay. Some other question? As usual, it's been a second. I uh, did a nice presentation, but sometimes it was hard to hear you. So, because it was time, sorry. Um, so, you are separating some particle based on this concentration and their uh, diameter? Or? Yes, they are separated by size. And the concentration is not as important at this moment. Yeah. But what is important is the concentration of PEO, which is added to uh, to apply elastic lift force. Yeah, what is PEO? Uh, polyethylene oxide, polymer. Okay. So by adding polyethylene oxide, the line is Thank you once more. For for the third presentation, we will change into the topic. It will be presented by Mark Rainger. We will be dealing with the liquid mixing and cardboard drops in bubble spray. There is no free USB. Uh, you have to take out the clicker. Which clicker? Um, this one? Yeah. Oh,
Yeah, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you have still, still some energy reserve left. My name is Mark Trenciak, and I work uh, under Maria Zenikova and Sandra Orval. I am in first year of my PhD studies. I am here today to present you our research on topic liquid mixing time and gas holdup in couple column by reactor. First of all, some uh, quick background. <clears throat> uh, bioreactors in general are important parts in uh, of biotechnology. Biotechnology is very important in uh, these days industry, especially in food, pharmacy, and cosmetics. Biotechnology in general uses uh, different kinds of cell cultures, which many of them often require steady supply of oxygen. Uh, for steady supply of, of oxygen uh, necessary, is necessary to have controlled aeration and homogenization. Aeration by itself is quite expensive and complicated process and precise setup is required. Otherwise the cells can die or a huge amount of money can be wasted. Uh, motivation for our research is the increase of efficiency and decrease of cost of aeration. Now, what's the aim of this research? The aim of this research is the, to improve uh, the prediction and uh, the modeling of oxygen transfer and hydrodynamics inside such systems. Uh, one way of how to approach this problem is experimental study of homogenization and aeration in bubble column by reactor. Uh, homogenization is represented by homogenization time and aeration is represented by gas holdup. And we studied uh, the influence of gas superficial velocity and aspect ratio on these parameters. Here you can see picture of the apparatus itself. Here is the bubble column and the left part over here is the system which delivers the, uh, the gas inside the column. We were focused mainly on changing two uh, important parameters which the first one is the aspect ratio, which is simply the height of the liquid divided by the diameter of the column. And the second one is gas flow rate in, ra in a range of two to 20 meters to cubic meters per hour, which refers to a superficial gas velocity of two, uh, 0 0.02 to 0 0.20 meters per second. Now to the methods of our research. First method was for gas holdup, which is basically volume fraction of gas or bubbles, if you want so, in total volume of gas liquid dispersion. The height of the liquid and of the dispersion was measured via the meter simply placed on the side of the column. Homogenization time was a bit more complicated, but a bit more colorful than the gas holdup. The homogenization time T95 refers to time which is necessary to reach 95% of homogeneity in liquid phase. I used a tra tracing method where I injected uh, acids and hydroxide in the, in the bubble column and I visualized the whole process by pH indicator. Whole process of color change was recorded via camera and uh, a final video was analyzed in image processing. Here you can see of graph such as analysis when on the y axis you can see the color intensity and on the x axis you can see the time. The program analyzes each frame of every video and determines when the color change reached 95% and after that calculates the final time. In case of this video in the presentation it was 3.56 seconds. And now to the results. On the first, uh, on the first picture, you can see the dependency of gas holdup on aspect ratio for different gas superficial velocities. 
there are two zones marked by red and blue color. In the red zone, there is almost no change of gas holdup with increase of the aspect ratio. On the other hand, in the blue zone, there is a visible trend when the gas holdup decreases with increase of the aspect ratio. After analyzing these data, we wanted some different way how to approach this data to have some better point of view and better analysis. And we looked for some more, more useful parameter how to describe this. We searched the literature and we found uh, the parameter called fruits number. Fruits number that are represented by the equation over here takes into account the amount of liquid inside the column and as well the gas superficial velocity. Here on this graph or picture, you can see the dependence of the gas holdup on the fruits number. Data uh, for each aspect ratio collides uh, or collapse on, uh, on one line, which is represented by this equation. Constants C1 and C2 were determined by empirical methods. This experiment, what you can see, was just for the pure distilled water. We compared our research for an, with another, which was focused on similar topic, which and the data from this research is represented by these constants for the same equation, and it's the line over here. You can see big difference between the, uh, the Sasaki's research and correlation made here. The main reason is the quality of water. Our uh, uh, The quality of water in this case is represented by conductivity. In case of Sasaki's distilled water, the conductivity was 170 microsiemens, and in our case was free, which is basically 60 times smaller. So there is a significant difference between the qualities of water. However, in the homogenization time experiment, we used uh, tracers, which basically contaminate the water inside the bubble column. And we know that the, uh, each uh, molecule placed inside the column can change the gas holdup. Now you can see how the gas holdup changed after the addition of the salts of, from the acid and the hydroxide and after the pH indicator. There is a significant increase of this trend. Now, here lies the one question, how did the physical properties of the media changed? Uh, we did an experiment focused on this topic and it's represented in the figure here. Here you can see the dependence of the surface tension of the concentration of salt. The black dashed line represents the surface tension of pure water taken from our source. The surface tension during the homogenization time experiments basically didn't change, or if so, very slightly. But on the other hand, the conductivity of the uh, final mixture changed significantly. The first dot over here is pure distilled water with conductivity of three microsiemens per centimeter. The second dot over here is the point where was the pH indicator added, as well as the first amount of salt from the beginning of the series of homogenization time experiment. And the last dot over here represents the final, uh, the final part of the series. The difference in conductivity uh, in the experiments was something between 700 to 1200 microsiemens per second. Now to the results for the homogenization time itself. Uh, here you can see figure which represents the homo dependence of homogenization time on uh, superficial gas velocity, again, for different aspect ratios. There is a slight visible trend of decrease of the homogenization time with increase of superficial gas velocity and big increase of mixing time with increase of, uh, of aspect ratio. Again, in this case, we wanted to find a parameter which helped us take another look on this data and have more clear view. We tried to find out such parameter, but with addition of the fact that the tracing compounds change the gas holdup, we didn't find any suitable. So we, uh, so we basically created our own. This parameter uh, we decided to call dimensionless mixing time, which is defined by the equation over here. In this figure, you can see the dependence of the gas holdup on the dimensionless mixing time. The data measured in our experiment reasonably collapse on the line defined by this equation. Again, constants A1 and A2 are empirically measured. 
Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Uh, well, in this case of this equation on the top, which defines the gas holder, this equation tends to take uh, into account several different factors, which is the amount of liquid, the superficial gas velocity, the mixing time, and the gas holder itself. Now comes one, one of the last questions of the presentation, and that is, what's the conclusion? The main conclusion of this research is the relation between dimensional homogenization time and the gas holder. This can be very useful uh, because uh, it takes into account uh, changes of quality of water, so it can be used of, on water with different qualities. As well, that it, uh, it takes into account several different factors, such as amount of water, etc. This equation can be utilized uh, uh, very efficiently in industries when the columns of different size are often used. Uh, the, uh, as well, this equation will be important for modeling uh, of uh, for modeling hydrodynamics and mass transfer inside the bubble column, as well as in scale up. Now, what's next in the research? In future, we will uh, focus on the axial dispersion coefficient inside the bubble column. And after, after that, we will change the gas distributor from heterogeneous to homogeneous one. Uh, and after that, we will do uh, several other experiments. After all this, we will try to improve the model which describes the oxygen transfer rate uh, from liquid, from, excuse me, from gas to liquid phase inside the bubble column. That will be all for me. Thank you all for attention. Special thanks for the projects which helped to realize this project and for my colleagues which helped me do this research. Thank you for the presentation, especially for the large letter that even old people can read. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure. And please, question and comment. Mark, uh, how did you establish the statistical significance of your results? Because they seem to be very, very yeah. come together. Come to what, what is the design of experiments did you use for uh, finding that your results were uh, experimentally sound? Experimental what? Excuse sound. Me. They are that they are real, that they are correct. I mean, that they are. Well, um, I did these experiments uh, several different times. So there is a, uh, there is a uh, at least three times repetition for every aspect ratio for every scenario. So there is uh, there is I think it's to at least some level uh, acceptable answer for your question. And well, I didn't have time to dig much into statistics of of my data. Uh, I had uh, I spent quite a lot of time of uh, remaking the bubble column to to different design which suits more for measuring homogenization time. The, it took several months, and I just recently finished measuring of the of the homogenization time itself. But uh, I'm planning to look into it. Thank you. Okay, just for comments on this figure, uh, you said that the constant a one and a a two was measured. No. Uh, yes, uh, it was fitted. Yeah, thank you. Um, the questions. Okay, okay Astrid, thank you. Um, so we based on the results uh, what you do and then of uh, why that is really important. Well, when we talk about bioreactors and methods connecting to them, usually they are done in continuously steered bioreactors, which have aspect ratio one, which basically means that the height of the liquid is the same as the diameter of, 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 the, of the reactor. The bubble column is a whole different story. We are talking about aspect ratios, which are three, even 10 times higher than the diameter of the reactor. So there is quite significantly different hydrodynamics, and it's basically a completely different system in this way. And this research helps to, uh, helps to uh, use these methods, but takes into account that they were uh, made for continuously steered reactors, but we are try trying to make them useful for bubble columns. Because if you apply 
method for continuously steered by a reactor, there is there can be a significantly large error because of the difference in the aspect ratio and other factors. If there is no other question, so thanks once more. And the last presentation will be on my favorite topic. So, right, so the and the the we will be done by the Thank you. Můžete to to Vidíme, co sdílíme. Trošku jiný. Ještě? Jo. To je to, tak tak musíte odzdílet to předchozí a oddělat co. Good afternoon, um, as for, for today's final contribution, I have prepared for a presentation about our research on the electrodiffusion method and the name of the presentation I have chosen as the electrodiffusion theory for motion stress measurement by two state row, alias journey to the origin hydrodynamics. Okay, so at the very at the very, very beginning, I will briefly talk about our motivation for motion stress measurement, which is quite wrong. Because motion stress is important quantity to optimize designs of vehicles to reduce their drag coefficients. As another example from absolutely different field of study is biotechnological application, where motion stress must not damage the cultivated biotic material. On the other hand, in cases when we want to intensify transport phenomena, we need to maximize for shear stress. Also, for studies of multi-phase forms, such as thermal bubbles, how they or sedimentation of suspensions, information of more shear stress can be very useful. However, uh, measurement of more shear stress is a difficult task even nowadays because we need to describe a region which is located in the immediate vicinity of the wall inside the hydrodynamic boundary layer. And in this region, conventional optical methods such as particle image transmetry or laser in fluorescence usually fail because they cannot measure directly on the wall. That means we ask a question if there is a method that is capable of measurements directly on the wall to measure the shear stress. And the answer is yes. A name of this method is the electrodiffusion method, for which four basic ingredients are defined ketone, anode, body source, and electrolytic solution. Thanks to the ongoing redox reaction on the surfaces of the electrodes, electric current is flowing through the circuit, and ketone is used as the measuring probe. And now it is necessary to somehow connect the measured quantity, which is the current signal, with the desired quantity in the form of all shear rate. There are two basic approaches how to do this. The first approach, the more straightforward one, is calibration, which uses empirical formulas to obtain a shear rate. And the second approach is the theoretical one. This approach uses an analytical description of the problem, which is based on the several assumptions. And in our research, we focused on this theoretical approach where the interface gate was paralyzed. Law. This law connects the value of measured electric current with the mass transfer coefficient, but the task to be done was to somehow connect the mass transfer coefficient with the motion factor. But to do this, 
It is necessary somehow to analytically describe the problem. So in our case, the governing equation was the second order partial differential equation, the convection diffusion mass transport equation. However, this equation it has no analytical solution, unfortunately. So we introduce several simplified assumptions. We consider steady state, that means time derivative of concentration is zero. Also, we consider the flow is parallel with all, that means the Z component of the velocity field uh, vector can be neglected. Also, if the packlet number is high enough, we can consider the diffusive terms in the direction of the x and y axis are approximately zero. And finally, if the Schmidt number is also high enough, we can consider linear dependence of the velocity field vector on the wall shear rate vector. So current form of the governing equation is following, which unfortunately still has no analytical solution. That means at the first step, we neglect the transfer component of the velocity field vector. That leads to this partial differential equation. This one we can solve analytically with following analytical solution that describes the concentration profile about the electron. Now, if we also take into the consideration that mass transfer coefficient can be calculated on the basis of Higgs law, for which we need the derivative of concentration with respect to the z variable, which can be calculated on the basis of the concentration field, we can finally obtain mass transfer coefficient for the case of this partial differential equation. And now the most important idea from the whole theoretical approach is following. We can consider measuring probe in such a way that it consists of individual measuring probes which are oriented in the direction of the flow and are of an infinitesimal width. That means even when we don't know the concentration profile for the case of this partial differential equation, we can obtain the master transfer coefficient on the basis of this master transfer coefficient, and that is what we did in our research. So as the main results, we derived a new theory for the case of two segments static measuring probe. Why two segments? Because we need two pieces of information we need to electrical current signals because two quantities are desired and that is the direction of the pole and also the magnitude of the wall shear rate factor. This topic was also studied by Professor Wein and Professor Richter, but they only considered one known zero component of the velocity field vector. So now we are broadening this topic for the case of arbitrary flow direction. We are building on their foundations. Main results so are these formulas for mass transfer partitions for the case of the front segment and for the case of the lead segment. And these are the functions of semi dimensional variables. These are the beta parameter that describes the flow direction. There, there, then there is the partial partition A, which describes the longitude values for the electrodes. And finally, aspect ratio array, that is simply ratio of planes to the edges of the electrodes. Explicit formulas you can see on this slide. And what is important here, that in all these relations, there are only two unknown variables the magnitude of the motion array, the beta parameter that describes the direction of the ball. So that means you have two relations, two unknowns. The task is practically done. Nevertheless, we needed to confirm the correctness of these formulas, so we performed uh, numerical simulations, which consists of numerical solution of convection diffusion transport equation. It was realized in software open form and scheme used for discretization of spinal volume method. And as a result, we have an agreement between uh, formulas and numerical simulation, which proves the correctness of the theory. theory. Here are two illustrated figures. On this one, you can see the concentration profile of the electrodes and the formation of the field boundary. It's visible. In the second figure, you can see the derivative concentration <laughs> with respect to the direction or not to the wall and highest values of the derivatives for the edges of the electrodes. Because there is first contact between the on-flow liquid and the surface of the electrodes. 
So on the basis of the formulas I was showing several slides ago, we propose a methodology for possible data treatment when we considered two basic flow regimes. Case of frontal flow, when liquid is flowing over the front segment first, and case of reverse flow, when liquid is flowing over the rear segment at first. And in these relations, we use the ratio of mass and coefficients to be So only one unknown here is present. And if beta parameter is calculated, we can use the analytical formulas for mass transfer coefficients to obtain the value of the motion right magnitude. And we have both desired quantities. If I should recapitulate it all, new theory for the electric fusional measurements was derived for the case of two segment strip measuring row. The following procedure how to obtain the ball shear stress vector was for all. From experimental measurements, we obtain the values of electric currents, which on the basis of the parallel slope of electrolysis can be calculated into the tensor coefficients. Then we use new derived theory to calculate the direction of the flow and magnitude of the Bosch rate vector, which means we have successfully obtained the Bosch rate vector and described the mirror hydrodynamics. What you can see here is a graphic abstract that was used for the publication of this new theory in the International Journal of the Masters. And that is all. I thank you for your attention. Thank you for the presentation and great questions. And I'm called so I cannot. No, we have performed just the simulation instead of experiments because the time to prepare the experimental measurement take a long time, so we use just the numerical simulations, but the Correctness has been improved by them. One other question. <laughs> so I'm sorry if we go back uh, to the like numerical uh, simulation. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So I I don't actually understand. So what exactly is the so? Yeah, like which? How how can I imagine this this uh part like with I within your channel which you are simulating and then uh, so you can connect close to the figures together. Here are two electrons and the liquid is flowing over them. And as you can see, what is plotted here is the concentration of the ions and on this on the surface of the electrons is occurring the redox direction. Mm -hmm. That means we consider that there is zero concentration of the reactive ions. But as we get far and far away from the surface, then the, uh, the concentration is increasing. And the diffusion boundary layer is formed there. So that means like the more red color, the far away from the surface we are, okay. where the redox reaction occurs. So I was thinking, and the, the right one, it it's uh, looks mm -hmm. contraintuitive. Because we, are, we have a uh, little bit more uh, different coordinate systems. Now we are looking mm -hmm. on the wall where the, where the electrodes are located. Mm -hmm. And what is here is the derivative of concentration. That means that is the rate of change. So mm -hmm. where are the highest values that is occurring the highest change in concentration. As you can see, when we are in the middle of the electrodes, the change is low, but on the edges, the change in concentration is highest. Mm -hmm. It makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> okay, thank you. Some questionable mathematics behind. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I would have a question. How do you relate this? Because you speak about uh, mass transfer coefficients, but from what I know, this uh, probes were actually measured, used for measuring shear stress. So, how do you 
Connect the two. Yes, you are, you are measuring electric current from electric current we calculate mass transfer coefficient and that is the point of the theory connecting of mass transfer coefficients with the whole shear stress vector and there are many many relations which are able to do this but it is possible so to find like the analogy between mass transfer and momentum transfer. no no, no. because uh, how to say it? The thickness of the diffusion boundary layer can depend on the magnitude of the velocity. The higher the velocity, the higher the convection, and the thickness of the diffusion boundary is smaller. So that means we can connect the component of the Bolshevik vector, which is connected to the magnitude of the velocity. And then it is possible when I will. Go several slides ago to the governing equation here. It's possible to connect the components of the velocity field vector with the rate vector. And after solving the partial differential equation where these components are present, it is possible to connect it. So it is all based on the on the idea of the height and of Schmidt number when we can uh, Consider linear dependence of velocity field vector on the wall shear rate vector. I think we're speaking about the same thing, just where we turn the names for the uh, for. Yes, okay, so I'm sorry, I did not understand it. Everything good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you once more.